Time for a soccer down here 1v1 as our coverage of USL League 1 playoffs continue. We are down to the final four, and our visit is Chattanooga. Time to catch up with the Red Wolves, Rafa Mensing. And Rafa, thanks for hanging out for a 1v1. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoy the conversation. All right. So at the beginning of the season, let me go all the way back to the beginning. At the beginning of the year, did you think and did the guys think that you had a run like this in you where you would be getting into the playoffs and into the final four chasing after a championship? What was the vibe like at the beginning of the year? Uh, I think it was, of course, our goal was always to win. But we know there is 10 other teams, 11 in the league that are training every day and, and they have the same goal. And I think the league was so tight, like the table was so close this year that kept not only us, but most teams like fighting for playoffs until almost the last week, which was really exciting. And for us, the same thing, like even though we dropped a lot of points in the first half of the season, we looked at the table like, look, we're still right there. Like we need to fix a few things that we did. And and we started like getting points, important points on the road that, that helped us to, to the playoff push. And now on to a semifinal. What did you think you had to fix? Uh, I think just a few, I feel like we're conceding some, some goals out of like just lack of concentration. Sometimes our shape a little bit. We focus on defending first because our team, of course, like we have a really good offensive, offensive players, but we're on defending as a unit. And at this level, you have to be on the same page. So I think at the time we started defending as a unit and allowing less goals, we started being successful. You mentioned how crazy USL League One is, and, and I think that it's one of the most competitive leagues around because literally if you have, say, three matches in eight days, if you go weekend, midweek, weekend, and you get a good run, you rock it from sixth, seventh, or eighth, and you could be up to second. But at the same time, if you're in that three matches in a week or three matches in eight days, weekend midweek weekend and you have a hiccup you could be going from second all the way down to eighth just how crazy and competitive has this league been do you think uh i think this year was one of the craziest years i've ever been part of like you said like all 11 teams there's just no no easy game like home or away it's always tough and like you said like in a week you win three you're fighting for first you lose three you're fighting for less I remember the first half of the season we lost three games in a row and we went from first or second to eighth place in like a week, like you said. So it's it's just crazy competitive. And I think it was really good for, for whoever was following the fans. It was, it was an exciting season. I mean, and it's and it's crazy. And the, the, one of the things that we've been able to watch in this league is the the rivalry aspect of it. Because of it being anchored in the southeastern United States, it's Chattanooga, it's Greenville, it's Tormenta in Statesboro, it's Charlotte, it's Richmond. You've got that those rivalries kind of built into this whole thing to add to the chaos of how competitive it is. Yes, yes, definitely. I think there's some games, especially teams that have been in the league for longer, that there's already the, the rivalry, that derby feeling, and that adds more like emotions, more nervous to those games, and especially when it starts getting to the final final stretch. And of course, like playoffs, it's just emotions are really high. It's intense. It's it feels like a derby every match. <laughs> Is there one thing that fans who might be just kind of casual fans uh, of USL League One or just soccer in general might not necessarily realize? about usl league one and about life in chattanooga if if you were to wander up to somebody there on the street they're they're in east ridge they, you know they're at the truest bank or something right there on the corner or they're over at bass pro shops and they may not know a whole lot about what's going on with red wolves and they go oh yeah that's soccer is there one thing that you'd like to sit here and go hand to heart here's one of the biggest misconceptions about USL League One? Is there something that folks sit there and think is true that really isn't? What's the hardest thing about this league that folks may not realize that you guys get to do to have to make sure that you get the job done? Uh, I think one thing about this league that people don't realize first is like how far you have to travel. So there was one week we, we went to play Fuego away on a Saturday. 
mm-hmm. and we had Omaha way on a Wednesday. So you're traveling to California, coming back. That's at our level. That's like two flights. You're not flying private. So that's two flights. So that's a day traveling, a day traveling back, a day to get to Omaha. Actually, you travel a day, playing Fuego in California, travel back a day, rest, travel another day, playing Omaha, come back to play a weekend at home. So it's the traveling can be really hard in this league because it's just the distance are really long. And most of the games that you said, like those rivalries down the south, mostly we take uh, we, we bus there. So it's still like a long trip. But uh, I think other than that, it's just adapting to every team plays on a different surface. Sometimes it's grass, sometimes it's turf. So some shape, some fields like Omaha, they play in a baseball field, so it's different size. So all those things that you got to really adapt almost on the go. I think that's what people don't realize that most players don't do at the highest level. Like if you're playing Premier League, you're playing at a perfect field, the same size pitch every weekend. So it doesn't, of course, the fans matter, but it's not that big of a change to play home and away as it is for us. You know, when you went to college, it was at at Bryan and at Valpo. And I know a lot of folks may think of Valpo and they go, oh yeah, Bryce Drew and basketball and all those kinds of things as, as a college basketball outfit. Then you got to spend some time in Lansing with both United and Ignite. You spent some time with Detroit City. You got to see how crazy it is there at Keyworth. Then mm-hmm. Memphis 901 and Chattanooga. What has it been like for a guy from Rio de Janeiro to learn about how things are in American universities when it comes to football and then in Michigan, which is an entirely different environment, and then be a part of something and build something in Tennessee? What's it like from Rio to Tennessee? Man, I mean, it's been it's been a journey and it's been it's been a dream, no doubt. Like like you said, just the fact that I came from Rio, from Brazil, and I already lived in five, six different states, playing soccer all over, like, and getting to know different people, developing my game, improving, winning, sometimes losing too. It's been a journey and it's been it's been unbelievable. It's really different than it is in Rio, of course. Like there's the first sports, the religion, but I love here. I love the safety, the infrastructure. I love the organization, how organized it is. And I'm enjoying every moment. So let's go back to uh, an, an enjoyable moment that you had last weekend, knocking off Union Omaha. Now that you've had a couple days to uh, look at what happened in the opening round of the playoffs as you're getting ready for the semis, what are some of your takeaways about the win that you guys had knocking off the defending champs? I think that's a huge win for us and there's something that we can definitely build on going to Richmond away, which would be a really, really tough challenge. But those playoff games are really tight. Like you can see, like no one wants to make a mistake. A mistake can cost you a game. So you just got to be concentrated. If you're a defender, concentrate 110% all the time. And for attackers, you just got to be waiting for an opportunity to to make it count and it happened on Saturday. Hopefully it will happen again next Saturday against Richmond. As you and I are talking, how much how much film have you watched? How much Richmond have you watched in general? What's your your overall vibe about going up against a team that is very, very tough and has a score in Emiliano Tuzaghi that basically lights it up like a pinball machine or like PS3? I mean, the, the guy's insane. What, what's your early takes on Richmond? Uh... Honestly, I didn't watch much film on them because we already played in three times. Uh, we know the team well. They know us. I think at this point, it's, it's about the little details, like I mentioned to you. Who's going to make the mistake? Who's going who's gonna to have the magical moment? Who is going to blink first, pretty much? So, yeah, we'll watch some film. We'll get ready. We'll get ready for, for the weapons. I'm sure they're studying us, too. But at the end of the day, once the ref blows the whistle, it's just be concentrated details and I'm firm believer that every game has a story and the Saturday game is going to have a different story. Hopefully it's going to be in our favor. How do you keep from getting too tight, getting wound too tight as a, as a player in a playoff situation? Because you mentioned the idea, you know, you, you don't want to get too tight. You don't want to make the mistake, but that's a real delicate thing where you still want to be who you are. You still want to do what you know you can do as a team but you don't want to get too tight because then you're not who you are as a team. How delicate a balance is that to be who you are yet knowing you don't want to make that first mistake? 
Uh, yeah, I think there's a, there's a really good question and it's something that some teams struggle with in playoffs. Maybe you get too nervous and you, you forget and you don't play your style and that can hurt teams a lot. Uh, I believe that, of course, like you need to be more concentrated. You need to be more, not afraid of making mistakes, but more mindful of the risks of a mistake in a playoff game, especially the later it goes on the, on the timeline. But I also think you have to have personality and continue to do the things that that we did well all season, which is building out of the back, having the ball, especially against a team like Richmond. You can't just go there and expect to defend for 90 minutes and come out of win. It's not going to happen. So we got to attack them. We got to defend. They're going to have their moments in the game. We're going to have ours. And whoever makes the, the chances count is probably going to be the winner on Saturday. You mentioned the travel, and I wanted to, to follow up with that. When it when you're busing or on a plane or, or doing whatever, and you're going from one place to another, how do you keep from turning your body into a pretzel? Because you're sitting down, you're in a bus, you're there for like 95 hours, and you're sitting down, and you're trying to make sure that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. How do you stay in as good a shape as possible with the constraints of an airplane seat or being in a bus or being in a van, those kinds of things. How do you, how do you stay in tip top condition when you're all crumpled up like that at times? Uh, I think the for me, that's one thing I struggle with. The road trips do take a toll on my body, especially those long ones. I try to stretch and move as most as I can. Of course, there's limitations. Here. Sometimes you can, especially in a plane, you can't be getting up all the time, but getting up, Move your legs a little bit, stretch, mobility. That's that's my what I try to do to to recover from the trips. Also have some special leggings that I wear on trips to to help with the compression. I try to do some recovery when I get to the hotel, go to the pool or something, and those things help me get my legs back a little bit. But of course, when you're going away on a long trip, it's not the same as playing at home. All right, so. Do we even dare ask uh, about the World Cup coming up and, and what you what you think is going to be going on there? Do we even ask about the favorites or one of the favorites there? Uh, I think one of the favorites definitely Brazil. Uh huh. And I'll great. be going, I'll be going crazy for Daniel Big that sick bring that six title home. <laughs> but I'm also excited to watch in general. I think it's going to be a great World Cup. I think this World Cup has a special element than the other ones didn't have, which is it's a World Cup that's going to have gonna happen in the halfway mark of the season I so to, you know i had before players are going to the world cup playing 70 80 games a season mm. now they're gonna be fresh playing like 20 30 so it's gonna be really interesting rafa mensing and getting ready for a league semifinal going up against richmond uh, rafa please be safe getting up there to city stadium it's a very very unique environment you mentioned baseball stadiums it, it is uh, a converted baseball stadium a weird vibe a bit of a weird environment but you guys have made the final four thanks for hanging out with us for a soccer down here one v one be safe wear the leggings may everything be good on the travel and have a great result this week and we'll be keeping an eye on things Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we'll speak soon.